Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu Lance video in the morning. These videos come in the evening MCQ lessons they come. After three days we are meeting here and uh, a fresh start must be there. It's a kind of a new phase in your preparation after Diwali and uh, you need to speed up all the things there. Your consistency will matter a lot and uh, now there is no space for any kind of lack, any kind of uh, compromise or any kind of uh, uh, difficulty if you face so you have to conquer everything within seven to eight days after that it will be a impossible game for you because the time is nearing you need to do answer writing you need to do uh, uh, your optionals at best and after that the preparation for prelims specific preparation will start there so that's the thing and 30th of october it is let's start the lesson courses are available at 70% off today is the last day okay so that's why it's important and premium content is also available available at uh, just 159 rupees per month pocket news app trending on google play you can download that regarding these courses the descriptions are given below the video you can call on these numbers for all the queries all the issues payment related issues you can call on these numbers and thousands of students uh, we are thankful to that they have understood the importance of these premium videos and they are following them religiously and the feedback is 100% PDF you will get here on telegram channel which is given here on this Facebook group you can follow me on Instagram too and first issue it is the biggest inspiration for today Mr. Nirmal Purja he is the person he broke the world record there within six months within six months he scaled 14 highest peaks of this world this looks something small in these words in but scaling these unimaginably high peaks and some of them are extremely difficult to scale like nanga parvat uh, mount kalash and all so these are incredible feats and within six months of time scaling 14 highest peaks is really magical because the earlier record was seven years 11 months and 14 days so you can imagine the intensity of it and uh, how this thing was possible you see when when you go above 4000 meters high then uh, the oxygen levels they fall to critical levels at that height at that moment you cannot think you cannot be sure of many of the issues and your body control is very weak so at that time your body gives up but it is all the practice it is all the willpower to do a consistent effort and to make the habit of sacrifice there so this is the phenomena you need today because it all matters when that moment comes that after that it is not possible for me that i will i will not go further and uh, this is the high time that after that i cannot make any compromise and uh, my body is saying totally no my mind is saying totally no and after that a lot of uncertainties are there and there can be many negative issues uh, with me so i will not go further so at that moment this is the line which is crossed only by the successful people means they will not care because their willpower is very very strong and this can be uh, this can this can be possible only because your aim was original your aim was yours and your aim was truthful if you have any doubt in your aim and out of any attraction out of any pressure if you have decided your goal then you will certainly give up there at that moment because you will not be able to sacrifice that much for that goal because you did not want it from your heart so that's why your decision regarding the goal is very very important and if it is true then you will certainly not give up at that phase and at that phase you will feel this thing and that phase will surely come even in the preparation of UPSC it will surely come and many times it will come so that's why always remember these kind of examples and uh, one thing is common they did not give up at that phase because that phase will come and you can extend that phase this is called a delayed gratification so that's why you need to work on that you have to build a practice for this issue okay next questions grow over NGOs invite to MEPs Kashmir situation is very sensitive 
since 5th of august we have not allowed any foreign delegation or a party to visit there now people from european union they are going to visit there but there is a controversy that these people are not officially invited or this event is not organized by ministry of external affairs this revelation is the, there by the hindu newspaper and it's a huge controversy because there are no feedbacks there are no uh, reportings officially on the jammu kashmir issue and people are just apprised by the military officials and uh, the authorities and the government there the ground situation is not known to the world now first time we are inviting these people but who is inviting ministry of external affairs no they are saying that we are not giving any protection we are not giving any uh, support there and uh, regularly mea organizes these kind of visits for foreign par parliamentarians to india but this time they are saying that we are not involved here so this becomes very controversial that who is uh, uh, bringing these people there and uh, what is the intention there means obviously they will give some feedback about the kashmir situation but is it going to be true or not that's the issue because these people are not called by minister of external affairs but they are meeting prime minister of india and vice president of india so what's the issue what's going on that's the uh, main concern by the hindu newspaper and they are revealing these things so we have to see we have to wait for the outcome of it that what comes after that because the feedback is going to be extremely extremely a huge issue for not only for india for this whole world and uh, these people are coming from the european union so many controversies are there okay and allegation is that that all the leaders which are coming they belong to some right wing parties in their countries so there can be any controversy there because the right wingers are dominating the scene there and uh, there is a huge controversy in their approach in their uh, 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 decision making and in their attitude towards the ongoing issues including the indian right wingers so that's the issue next india saudi arabia they condemn terrorism issue if we talk about terrorism and if we talk about the muslim countries then there is a unique point there what is that means you must have remembered the ccit proposal by india the comprehensive convention on international terrorism we want to define that there is no good terrorism there is no bad terrorism that is something we are about to say there we have sent this proposal in 1996 till date it is not uh, uh, accepted but there is a force in this world and that force is uh, uh, coming from many countries many lead leaders or you may say some right wingers also they want to link, link some ideologies with the terrorism issue because uh, common issues are like that always some factions some ideologies and some extremist phenomena and mainly because majorly they belong to islam religion so they want to establish that link in that definition some things leaders want to put there so there is a confusion and always there is a proposal but it is against the islamist factions somewhere so they want to resist this issue also so muslim countries always resist this phenomena that there cannot be any linkage between the religion and the terrorism issue terrorists are different so this is our stand also so that's why this joint statement is very important that no particular religion race or culture should be linked with international terrorism so that's the justified thing and that we all know because bad people are there in every religion so you cannot say that but some pressure is always there if you talk about israel's leadership then uh, their stand has been like this in the past if you talk about mr trump then uh, maybe some things are political but sometimes indirectly he has conveyed this kind of issues and uh, some other leaders from the countries too if you talk about the domestic politics of india then the right wing groups in india they always say this thing openly that why these uh, terrorists are coming always from the muslim religion and all and all these issues but you see this is this is the uh, thing that we need to learn there international standards are very important diplomacy is very important and a standard should be maintained there and uh, that that should be our thinking too and we are maintaining that and that's a great thing means politics may push these things towards communal agendas but 
we have to talk about humanity we have to talk on those grounds so that's why there cannot be any linkage between the religion and the ideologies you can never say that there can be huge conspiracies against anyone okay there can be conspiracies in uh, against muslims also there can be conspiracies against any other groups also how can you uh, uh, be sure about something in this huge world where so many games are being played there if you see the condition some people want to establish this link is there and uh, there is also a fact that uh, uh, many of the muslim countries they are devastated because of the terrorism issue only so that's why they are the biggest victims so this issue is totally unjustified if some somebody would say that uh, the terrorism definition should be linked with islam this is totally wrong even the allegations are there and indirectly many countries say that isis was floated by the cia agency so there can be any truth which is lying under the ground so that's why in the definition of terrorism there is no there is no good or there is no bad terrorism and uh, there is no linkage with any race religion or culture bad people evil people are there everywhere in every country in every group in a, every community in every religion so that's why it's unique and uh, this statement is very very important and you see we signed 12 mous there in the areas of narcotics renewable energy and uh, training of diplomats defense production rupee cards issues and all so uh, this is all important there so here the picture where uh, in riyadh saudi arabia our prime minister is meeting with jordan's king king abdullah 2 also so it's a important meet which is going on with the gulf nations and uh, they are very important our fuel demands are being uh, met by these countries we are importing maximum of these gases and crude oil from uh, these countries so extremely important meet is going on and this uh, geopolitical game which is going on and which is uh, extending from syria to afghanistan this issue is uh, really relevant there so that's the issue okay so if you talk about this whole concern this is centered on this definition of terrorism and that's why the subtitle is no particular religion race or culture should be linked with the international terror and that is by a joint statement okay that that is something important for gs paper too specially next kudan kulam plant this plant was established by india and russia jointly russia's atom straw export and india's npcil india's npcil is the state owned agency and they both installed these capacities and six units are there 1000 kilowatts sorry uh, megawatts per unit and total 6000 megawatt is the capacity there so it's a huge capacity and the location is there Tirunelveli district and Tamil Nadu. So it's closest to the Indian Ocean there, and uh, totally located on the coast. Always these kind of plants are located on these sites because they need water, and there are many uh, security issues. So that's why. Now a huge threat was there, where some allegations were there that the security issue, the online security was compromised, and uh, this was hacked. but now the officials say it was a physical problem it was a mechanical mechanical problem and the, this is totally a hack proof system because the air gapping is there means they are isolated from the unsecured networks so there cannot be any issue of hacking the system there okay so uh, this is the official statement there and they said that there was no cyber attack on the unit and it is not possible so they may ask you about these uh, these uh, uh, issues about the kudan kulam plant also and the six units are there four are constructed two are about to be there and the unit per kilowatt per hour unit costs at 4.29 rupees according to the official data so that's a very efficient system and uh, in india this means a lot this means a lot because nuclear energy can be the future and it is a uh, extremely important source for the next generations because uh, tomorrow we cannot be dependent on coal and uh, the fuel supply because they are limited but these solar energy renewable energy nuclear energy these are the futures there but some associated dangers are there with the nuclear energy there so that's the thing okay the location you must remember and for others too you must uh, find the data there like for jaitapur plant 
with which country we are uh, collaborating there who is establishing there and other ongoing issues in the energy sector especially in the nuclear energy sector read about npcil also okay next next cgi mr sharad arvind bobde or you may say justice bobde will be there on the chair and he will be the next chief justice of india right now mr gogo is there he is going to retire very soon so next will be bob day and a uh, important thing is that he is given a label of being a practical judge so that's a very important need for india and it's a very great thing that our next cji is labeled as practical judge because he is a strong votary of a continuous hearing of important cases like in the ayodhya hearing he is a strong supporter of continuous hearing he want to solve these issues as soon as possible and he played a crucial role in the issue of uh, uh, deciding about the privacy matter that is it a fundamental right or not so he played important roles in notable judgments there okay so it is going to be a great opportunity for this country that uh, our next cji is labeled as such and we will have to see because crucial judgments are due crucial issues are due in this country and what's going to happen we will see there in the picture you see mr bobde here and this is mr pk mishra who is the principal secretary to our prime minister okay next indians are the least active this study is done by a important uh, uh, fitness uh, firm fitbit they are telling that we are walking on an average 36 steps lesser than the world average and almost uh, uh, 6.5 thousand steps we are walking every day but these numbers are very less for the richer people in this country i am telling you and india is going to be at den very soon of diabetes cancer coronary disease kidney ailments and all and all our fatal problems india is the den and it is going to be the capital of all these diseases our genes are not that much strong this study uh is all out there because the cases are too much in number and especially in the poor and lower middle class populations there and the issues of food quality water quality these all things are there many reports say that uh, uh, even the water is contaminated in this country and that's why many people are uh, very much vulnerable but the lower exercise volumes are a major push towards those diseases so it's a message for all for me for you also that uh, we have to take care about our health at least for one hour a day we need to do intensive exercise so that these dangers can be lowered otherwise uh, uh, we have a very troublesome future and these diseases they they create scares in the societies in the uh, populations there because if one person dies of cancer the whole family is uh, hounded like that because these are fatal problems and these are rising because of our lifestyle issues and these are the data these are the truths there so we have to become a active country like uh, many countries like if we take the example of australia people are very healthy people are very active they are very sporty but if you call india sporty it would be a funny statement india is not uh, a sporty nation only some regions people play a lot of sports but uh, uh, the major part of this country they just living a compromised life and they do not see the importance of being active there so that's the issue and we need these kind of movements we need these kind of uh, 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 support there next 36 million indians they will face flood risk in the future and you see the numbers are rising because rising sea levels are a major problem india played a leadership role for these island nations which are located near the international rate line because they did not have any voice and they are very small nations so nobody cares about them but we took this leadership and we raised their voice there in uh, general assembly too so we played a important role there this issue is so crucial because the sea levels are rising uh, uh, we just saw that in antarctica billions of tons of ice that was falling in the ocean and the whole chunk of uh, clean water that was going into ocean so ultimately it will 
raise the level of sea and uh, the areas which are just 2 3 4 meters uh, above the sea level they will certainly drown and this issue is rising this is becoming so huge a concern that these data you can put in the main sensor writing these statistics are extremely important there you see in china also the maximum populations they are located on the eastern part of it and there these typhoons rains monsoons and uh, these uh, sea level rise they are major problems many people die because of these typhoons and all and in india also in the eastern part we see these problems maximum amount of uh, uh, water through these rivers that is going through these areas and on the eastern border on the eastern coast people are living a vulnerable life example of bangladesh is very crucial there people are facing a lot of difficulties a uh, island which is going to be populated by rohingyas very soon that can be submerged very easily if the sea level rises even with the smallest amount there so that's why uh, these are huge concerns and the countries like bangladesh they are extremely vulnerable in that context so crores of people and their lives are threatened and who is responsible we know who is responsible there so the whole world should be united and the collective action is needed otherwise we are murdering in a way crores of people there next court will take victims word in rape cases a important decision is there by supreme court there it says rape is presumed if occurrence of sexual intercourse is proved and the woman claims that the act was committed without her consent now if she testifies that uh, the consent was not there then the court will take her words and the accused will have to bear the consequences there so this can be very controversial because this is the situation if we see uh, the whole population collectively then uh, this is the right decision but there can be protest by some groups where some victims are there male victims are there who are falsely implicated in these kind of cases and uh, there can be wrong testimonies and maybe false cases are there and here in those cases this can be a additional problem because the court will take the words of uh, the victim woman and uh, in these rape cases her consent and the testi uh, testimony to that uh, issue will be very very important okay so this can be a bias but uh, obviously in the major part of the, uh, the 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 rural india these issues are really concerning and even in the urban areas these are concerning issues because females are exploited especially in the work areas these are a major issue okay so uh, there can be a question on this dilemma because it is it, it's, it's going going to be a dilemma in many many cases because if the false cases are there if the, if the misuse is there of this uh, uh, of this much uh, support then uh, it can be a dilemma so you have to comment on that uh, problem that the how to balance this situation and, and justify the support which is needed to the victim females and uh, in the cases of misuses how this can be a menace so that's an important question important for gs paper 2 next a uh, topic from art and culture important for gs paper 1 and uh, especially for prelims Hori Habba. Hori Habba is like Jali Kattu, a cattle taming game there. It's a daredevil. And ancient India, uh, they were dependent on agriculture, so the cattle were also very very important. And they were the part of their traditions. They were involved in their traditions and their uh, uh, festivals and all. And uh, this issue is going on for thousands of years. Animal rights issues are there, but uh, this is also a part of tradition. That's why it's important for the exam. So just like the Jali Kattu in Tamil Nadu. this is hori habain karnataka region now we come to the article here first article you see this is topping talking about a unique issue a topic centered concern that is rct randomized control trials what are these randomized control trials are the issue on which the nobel prize winners are there for economics this year mr benerji uh, his wife deflo and michael kramer what are the views mr banerji is the strong supporter of this issue and he says that it is the cheapest and the best tool for developmental economics and the anti poverty measures and that's good and uh, this support is there the nobel prize he has won on that so it is the biggest approval but 
Atanu Biswas, who is a professor of statistics in ISI Kolkata, he says that there can be some criticisms too because it is not a new issue. It's an old concept. It's quite old. If you talk about Sir Ronald Fisher, so he adopted this idea 100 years ago and in the context of design of experiments, if you talk about clinical experiment, then there is a unique thing. Means if the doctor is going to do some experiment on some patients, then neither the doctor nor the patients, they know about the consequences there. So they both are blind about that. But if you talk about the economic experiments in the developmental economics, then we know that if we'll, we will give some support, if we will give some money to some poor person, then some positive consequence will be there. We know about that. So that kind of blindness cannot be there. So you cannot imitate the clinical trials to these randomized trials on populations there for anti-poverty measures. So there can be some failures in some cases. It is not something that it is totally wrong or uh, this may fail always, but uh, uh, this is a slight over exaggeration of the claims that it is the best idea. He says that it is a better idea, but you cannot say this is the best that we have developed. It is not the right thing to say. Here they gave the example of uh, uh, the anti-retroviral therapy AZT and their randomized trials in some populations. And it was seen that if we apply the randomized trial issue, then the failure rates are lesser there. And we can know more about the drug trials there. So randomization makes different treatment groups comparable and also helps to estimate the errors associated in the inference there means what we what do we know uh, after this uh, uh, experiment so this is helpful but if you talk about the economy then you may find some failures there and you may find some disappointments there like the example of basic income experiment in finland there they targeted uh, the age group of 25 to 58 for the unemployed uh, people and they gave 560 euros a month then they found some disappointment means the observation was not not that much assuring so that's why you know that uh, you target some specific groups there and you bring out solutions there but you cannot get 100 percent solutions always because even there are some differences means uh, you cannot say uh, differences but you can say variance of uh, observations professor banerji thinks rcts are the simplest and best way of assessing the impact of a program his wife professor deflo she refers to RCs, rcts as tool of choice so husband wife they are at variance so uh, normally they always are but uh, uh, this issue is important so Critics of RCT in economic experiments think that in order to conduct RCTs, the broader problem is being sliced into smaller ones and any dilution of the scientific method leaves the conclusions questionable. Means you may, you may find conclusions in the economic experiments, but there can be some misses and there can be some wrong conclusions. You cannot say this is always the best way. Economists such as Martin Revelian, Danny Roderick, William Easterly, Angus Deaton and Angus Deaton, you, you see these are Nobel laureates. They are very critical of the using randomized trials in economic experiments. So that's why there are some differences there. That's the issue. So UPSC may ask you about this uh, opinion because two articles we have had this article and the last one which was in total support of the randomized trials and the person was explaining the uh, randomized trials issue and how they can be very important and helpful there so that's why upsc may ask your opinions that uh, it is a justified case and it is also a good tool but talk about the critiques too and comment on this randomized uh, controlled trials there because this phenomena has won the nobel prize this year it is related to an Indian and uh, the experiments were done in India and they were helpful there and there were proposals like in the NAS scheme uh, his, his idea was applicable so that's why it's a very important issue UPSC can certainly ask you questions on RCT issue okay so that's the case next uh, this this article is important for GS paper 2 and 3 both because issue is related to 
economic experiment so gs paper 2 and 3 both because the policy making is important and the economy is important and the anti poverty issue social issues they are also concerned here so it's a collective issue next legal pluralism in this case fazan mustafa talks about the the universal civil code issue article 44 is dedicated to this uh, uh, concern in the constitution of india but it is under the part 4 and dpsps are there they are not legally enforceable they are a good suggestion to the welfare state if you want to create there so nobody can ignore that but you see all other issues are totally positive this is also positive and if we would have been a country like a European country a small country with small population similar populations similar language then this issue was a compulsory one but in a unique diverse world which is called India things are too complex and we started with the constitution in 1947 with a new thinking that this would be the start of a new nation there because whatever was there in the past we cannot be sure about anything today maybe some right wingers are uh, uh, digging the history and they are explaining the history in their own terms and they are distorting the history at many places but nobody can be talking about history because a lot has happened on this land people came from everywhere even the people who may claim today who knows from where they came who knows from from where i came who know from uh, where your uh, generations came so it's all a mix up it it was a great mix up of the races in this uh, in this uh, world called india and that's why the traditions they are thousands of year old and that's why the personal law was given a status of the fundamental right according to article 25 and 26 they are subjected to some restrictions always but uh, uh, the level was given that they are close to fundamental rights because the religion is relevant here according to religious personal laws were created but when they create negativity and divisions in the society then we need to tackle the issues but you see on what basis we are creating these uh, 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 differences means it can be a diversity and according to writer this is not a right phenomena to apply in india even the law commission last year concluded that the ucc is neither desirable nor feasible indeed it is a best to enact as ucc in a piecemeal manner means the way they want to enforce it and the way they are talking about it that like the jammu kashmir decision we may announce it very soon and this will be the law of the land but that issue will crush the diversity also it is a justified case then that there should be a ucc in this country so that there is there is a smooth process of uh, 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 managing the country bringing out laws about that and uh, people are running their life according to a set standard but you see india is not at that level today the education levels the uh, the apathy levels the awareness levels the different communities different traditions tribals they all are there their all cases are important and if you talk about the case of goa uh, where uh, since 1867 the uc is going on but that was given by the portuguese and even in that there are certain conditions this is not like uh, uh, the ucc we all are talking about this is something else where some conditions are attached like the absolute absence of male issue and uh, the wife previous wife having completed 30 years of age and being of lower age 10 years having elapsed from the last pregnancy so certain conditions are there so you cannot say this is an ideal ucc and uh, there are issues of prenuptial contracts parties may opt out of this joint ownership of properties and always the husband is given preference and if you talk about the case of hindus there so that is also applicable for hindus means always the male is dominating the scene even the wife's property is going to the husband's parents after the husband's death so this is something very controversial and uh, you talk about ucc in the context of muslims always but uh, uh, we have to talk about all the religions and in all the religions there are many controversies here he says that as far as muslims are concerned the muslim personal law the sharia application of 1937 has not been extended to goa muslims of goa are governed by the portuguese law as well as sharia 
हिंदू लॉ सॉरी शास्त्रिक हिंदू लॉ द सारे लॉ इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल देयर सो कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज आर देयर एंड यू सी ओनली वन ऑफ द डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल देयर एंड इवन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मेकर्स वर नॉट श्योर अबाउट दिस इश्यू टू मेक इट अ फंडामेंटल नॉर्म ऑफ द लैंड एंड एज आई टोल्ड यू द राइट टू फॉलो पर्सनल लॉ हैड बीन एलिवेटेड टू द हाइस्ट स्टेटस स्टेटस ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट एंड द इंपॉर्टेंट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यू ऑफ ट्राइबल्स देयर वी आर कमिटेड टू मेंटेन द ट्रेडिशन एंड रेस्पेक्ट द कन्वेंशन ऑफ द ट्राइब ट्राइबल स्पेशली इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट वेयर मेनी डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट आर देयर द यू सी सी कैन नेवर बी एप्लीकेबल देयर सो हाउ कैन वी टॉक अबाउट वन नेशन वन लॉ दिस इज अ फ्यूटाइल नोशन ऑल दो इट फॉल्स इन कॉन्करेंट लिस्ट वेयर बोथ सेंट्रल स्टेट दे कैन मेक लॉस बट यूनिफॉर्मिटी इन द होल कंट्री इज अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स आइडिया एंड यू कैनॉट एनफोर्स इट देर कैन बी इंप्रूवमेंट ग्रेजुअली बट एनफोर्सिंग इट लाइक द जे एन के डिसीजन दैट इज समथिंग मे प्रूव टू बी डिवास्टेटिंग सोशली बिकॉज ऑलरेडी सम एलिगेशन आर गोइंग ऑन दैट सम सर्टन कम्युनिटीज आर टारगेटेड इन एवरी इश्यू एंड देर इज अ क्लियर केस ऑफ बायस देयर एंड दे वॉन्ट टू इंटरफेयर एवरी वेयर एंड विद अ फोर्स दे आर इंटरफेयरिंग सो दीज काइंड ऑफ एलिगेशन दे मे प्रूव टू बी वेरी डिवास्टेटिंग सो वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट ऑल ऑफ द इशूज एज आई टोल्ड यू हिंदू सक्सेशन एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स made several compromises and could not make daughter a co partner till 2005 today daughters they have a right but wives are still not the co partners so that that's unique and uh, today property devolves first to class 1 hires and if there are no class 1 hires then it goes to class 2 hires but nowhere it goes to the daughters there it goes to class 1 hires sons only males and when it goes to class 2 then again it, it goes to male line not to female line so that's why it's a unique and controversial issue in the hindus also and there is no uniform applicability of personal laws among muslims and christians there are many many factions and there are many many differences there so that's why it's a unique thing although if you talk about talk about uh, the favor then it's a justified thing that the court cases are there authorities face many troubles and they cannot decide about many many issues and uniformity is not there that's why they take a lot of time and many many cases are going on a lot of legal troubles are there but that's justified but this case is also justified means uh, uh, in this complex country things cannot be forced that's the issue because things become so personal and uh, people are hurt and the communities which are still there and due to politics the castes the 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 communities the the religions they are very very strong ideas you cannot fight them with forces although there should be uniformity and uh, we must be the strong supporters of the uniformity and it smoothens the legal process and that's why it's very very important so this is how the issue is there and law commission concluded that the ucc is neither fe- desirable nor feasible so the practical problems are there so upsc may ask you a question that uh, discuss this issue discuss this dilemma and uh, one side there is legal process one side there is a strong traditional way and the personal law issue because it is personal but it creates a lot of legal problems so how to solve this dilemma and in which way we can bring out solutions there so for that you need to arrange points there so this is all today we will meet again tomorrow the afghanistan issue is a well discussed issue and uh, here it's a conundrum for india because america withdrew from these talks today if they resume the talks then taliban will be stronger pakistan will be stronger psychologically and uh, india's condition will be complex because we cannot engage with with both Uh, the players there which are very strong and if the talks they remain failed then there will be rapid destabilization in the area and that will affect us certainly that will affect us we have talked over this issue many times and that's why we need to move very cautiously and as i told you we are in a way isolated from the matter we have not engaged with taliban in any uh, condition and it's a kind of a complex situation we should have got uh, uh, involved there 
but we could not involve because we have our own certain standards we said that we will not engage with terror groups but all bigger countries are involved there so if you uh, talk about that responsibility of a big nation then uh, uh, this is the case so it's a complex thing and a lot of diplomatic capital we need to invest there so that's the issue so thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sir